halt. Speak. This week on At The Movies, John Travolta and Miley Cyrus get animated in Bolt. We've got the early review. What the hell is wrong with you? You're an international movie star. Jean-Claude Van Damme is back in a movie that will take you by surprise. The Critics Roundup ranks the best of five. Let's party! Yeah. yeah. Plus, two of the biggest movies of the year on our DVD Out Now list. I can be a valuable addition to your team. The road will be rough. I have a ball. Easy won't be part of the equation. Promise. Danger at every turn. I eat danger for breakfast. You hungry? Starving. John Travolta voices a canine superhero on a quest to save his beloved owner. I'm Ben Lyons from E! Entertainment. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz from Turner Classic Movies. 2008 certainly has been a good year for animation. WALL-E, Madagascar 2, Kung Fu Panda were all sophisticated animated features telling compelling stories. Well, now we can add another to that list, Bolt. It opens next week. This is an early review. It's the story of a dog who's the star of his own TV show where he constantly <laughs> saves the life of Penny, nice voiced by Miley Cyrus. Only Bolt, that's the dog, doesn't know it's just a TV show. He actually thinks he's a super dog, faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a... You get the idea. Okay, so what we do here is we give the target a quick flyover, we adjust the trajectory, and then land dead center. Am I missing anything right now? Just the knowledge that every minute spent in your company becomes the new greatest minute of my life. Let it begin! Let it begin! Let it begin! Wait! You are not a superhero! That's John Travolta, who does a really nice job as the voice of Bolt, while trying to save Penny, who, of course, doesn't need saving. Bolt is accidentally shipped to New York, and the bulk of the film is his attempt to get back to Penny while coming to terms with the harsh realization that he is indeed just an ordinary dog. Nothing you think is real is real! You're ridiculous. I will super bark you out of that tree! Go nuts. Let's see how that works out for you. Super barks. The film is funny with a sophistication that might actually appeal more to adults, but there's still plenty for the kids to enjoy. The dog, come on, delightfully cute. If you can, take the family to see it in 3D. It's available in both 2D and 3D, but the 3D is really vibrant and alive and doesn't engage in any packy 3D tricks like throwing things right at the audience's face like a toothbrush or peanut butter. It's sweet, but it's not overly syrupy, Ben. I definitely say see Bolt. Absolutely. I say see it as well, because I think it fits the Mankiewicz test for animated films. What Thank is you. it, right? It's got to be fun for the kids and also appeal to the older it's audience. tolerable as well. for the, for the this adults. It's more than tolerable, exactly. yeah, because this is kind of inside Hollywood, and it's funny, and it's sweet. It's got some tender moments, and I like that Miley Cyrus is, again, playing a girl who doesn't really want to deal with all the things of being famous. She just wants to be a normal girl, and I think that's admirable for young Young girls to sort of aspire to, and it's got a great ensemble cast. It's not the most original idea, but still effective nonetheless. Yeah, but it looks original. I mean, the way the 3D is, you know, Disney obviously led the way with animation from the time from the 1930s on, and this is again a really creative way to. I mean, I'm sure it's good in 2D, but seeing it in 3D, uh, really compelling. This, this th those, 3D blows out the, you know, the yeah. journey to the center of the earth out of the water, because like you said, those movies are kind of, ooh, we're playing on the fact that it's 3D. No, this just sort of enhances your experience. It seems like animation animated films can't resist sort of spoofing other movies. Uh, I thought sort of subtly and effectively done here. Uh, there's a great moment uh, where when Bolt is shipped across the country, he's uh, sent in packing styrofoam. Uh, and then as he comes to realize he doesn't have any superpowers, he thinks it's the styrofoam that has weakened him. So packing styrofoam essentially becomes his kryptonite. Makes fun of animated films, makes fun of pop culture, makes fun of superhero movies and the television business. And I hope we see more Bolt movies to come. Tough race for best animated uh, feature this year. Bolt uh, definitely in the running. Well, our next movie, Slumdog Millionaire, comes from the acclaimed director, of train spotting and 28 days later Danny Boyle and it's one of the best movies of the year Dev Patel plays Jamal an impoverished Indian boy who appears as a contestant on his country's version of who wants to be a millionaire you're absolutely right it's getting hot in here <laughs> are you nervous what <laughs> am I nervous it's you who's in the hot seat my friend Yes. Sorry. 
The film centers on a series of moving and poignant flashbacks to the turning points and key moments in Jamal's life that have led him to the right answers and to this moment on live TV with one question remaining for 20 million rupees. Slumdog Millionaire is brilliantly directed with outstanding performances, including Frida Pinto, who plays Jamal's love interest. Hello? Hello, Jamal? I'm guessing that isn't your brother. <laughs> this is? My name is Latika. Okay, Latika. After winning a huge sum of money, Jamal is questioned and even tortured by local authorities for being suspected of cheating. This is a deeply emotional, stylized, and wonderfully rich film. The intoxicating drum beats layered over the sweeping shots of the slums immediately transport you into one man's incredible journey. Look for multiple Oscar nominations for this movie. I say see it. Oh, I want to be clear here. I say see it too. I think this is a good movie, but I think you need to calm down and everybody else who has overhyped this movie. This is a good movie, not a great movie. A wonderful two-thirds of the film, and then in the final third, turns into a very traditional love story, uh, and the evil characters in it become caricatures of evil, a very pedestrian turn. I just I just thought it was so creative and inventive that I really lost myself in it. It kind of touches on every human emotion. There's love, there's brotherhood, there's dealing with family, there's dealing with excitement and terror and, and betrayal. I, betrayal. And, and, and I find that for a movie like this, it's got to get talked about. You're telling everybody to calm down. It's a movie that platformed at Toronto. It needs word of mouth to get out there because it doesn't have Brad Pitt and it doesn't have big recognizable stars. I hope it gets word of mouth, but that's not what interests me. What interests me is that we have what I think is most of a terrific movie that then did generates leaving it as only okay good worth seeing i'm saying see it but not but when the entire country great... is on the edge of their seat watching to see if jamal's gonna win 20 million rupees you tell me you weren't on the edge of your seat i was not on the edge of my seat what was fascinating is you know you go back 10 years to when who wants to be a millionaire was out here uh we were fixated on the television myself included and it was nice to see hey look in india also fixated on uh, on winning not a million dollars but 20 million rupees really inventive way that Danny Boyle told the story, I agree with you, sort of, that we learn Jamal is no genius, but he knows the answers simply because his life experiences have uh, revealed these, these specific answers to him. I thought that part was really great. Well, the way the TV show has a universal appeal, I think this film does too. Coming up next, Jean-Claude Van Damme plays himself in the time-shifting thriller JCVD. No, it didn't expose, right? I'm 47 years old, and it's very difficult for me to do everything in one shot. What if I told you that one of the coolest and most creative films of the fall starred Jean-Claude Van Damme? Is that something you might be interested in? You'd probably say no, but give JCVD a chance, because I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. How does this actor play death? Let me count the ways. Mangled under the wheels of a truck. Mr. Mr. Van Damme. There were low Please, budgets. Mr. Van Damme. Every of my please, movie were having heart. The muscles from Brussels plays himself, self-deprecatingly and convincingly so. Down on his luck and nearly broke from going through a bitter custody battle, Van Damme returns to his hometown to handle some personal financial issues. That's where he gets caught up in a random bank heist and the film truly finds its voice. <laughs> Director Mabruk El Mekri takes a concept that has been done so many times before on film, a robbery with a hostage standoff, and he approaches it from this unique, engaging angle of the sympathetic action hero who was forced to exist in the real world. Van Damme is in on the joke and showcases a side of him we've never seen before, quality acting. One monologue in particular demonstrates a tenderness and vulnerability not often associated with the star of Bloodsport and Universal Soldier, The Return. I found JCVD really enjoyable. I say see it. Uh, I liked it as well. I also say see it. Uh, I thought really inventive and, and the way that they were able to play on the, the stereotype that we have about Jean-Claude Van Damme. There's one scene where a guy in the bank heist has been rendered unconscious and Van Damme says, you know, I once knocked myself out from blanks in hard target. <laughs> 
They needed smelling salts to revive me. I so, love it. They're I, playing on the absurdity of celebrity and the absurdity of this his, guy's uh, career. Right. The frustration he has from losing out a role to Steven Seagal <laughs> only because Steven Seagal <laughs> agreed to cut his ponytail. I love that. I really hated that monologue that you mentioned. And I thought, again, sort of oddly enough, like Slumdog, it was a turn in the final third of the film that I didn't care for at all. And I thought really took us out of this gritty documentary-like film uh, and, and put me back to realizing, oh, wait, I'm just watching a movie. And well, why is, why is he talking to the and audience? And they're playing with the, the sort of typical film-going experience. And I think without that monologue, the film turns into a farce, into an, like a, an, an elongated Saturday Night Live skit, if you will. This kind of gave it some meaning and some purpose. And I didn't think he did a bad job with it. I thought it was unnecessary, took us out of the movie, and I think did some serious damage to it. Again, on the cusp of being a great film, falls down to only a good I film. I love One's when still directors can play with linear storytelling. I like this that. guy I jumps all around no the, problem all over with that. the place. Just the monologue and the actual ending resolution of the of Van Damme's court case, I thought uh, silly. Still, worth seeing, but ultimately a bad turn in that final third. The first time you probably said, go see a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, though. It's probably. pretty cool. Coming up next, Daniel Craig stars in the latest Bond movie, Quantum of Solace. But where does it rank in the history of the entire franchise? A critics roundup decides. Mr. Bond, she won't go to bed with you unless you give her something she really wants. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Beg your pardon? Forgot to knock. What is this? I've had a few optional extras installed. It'd be a pretty cold bastard who didn't want revenge for the death of someone he loved. I don't think the dead care about vengeance. There's a lot of talk about this weekend's big release, the new James Bond movie, Quantum of Solace. Again, Daniel Craig has the license to kill, and the movie, which is a full-fledged sequel to Casino Royale, picks up the action about 42 minutes after the last movie ends with the death of Bond's true love, and Bond wants revenge. What are you doing? Hold on! Both said see it when we had an early review on last week's show, though with significant qualifications. And with the theatrical release of this latest film and the release of six classic Bond movies on Blu-ray, we can hear the debate starting out already. What are the best Bond movies and who was the best Bond? So we decided to open it up to our Critics Roundup. This week we have Matt Singer from IFC and Variety Film critic Joe Layden. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Matt, we'll begin with you. What's your favorite Bond movie and where does Quantum of Solace rank? Well, I mean, to me, there's only really one right answer, and that's something with Sean Connery in it, you know, from Russia with Love, or maybe Goldfinger. Quantum of Solace, uh, I have to admit, uh, big disappointment for me. I was a big fan of Casino Royale, and not very crazy about Quantum of Solace. To me, the movie has kind of an identity crisis. It doesn't know whether it's supposed to address the real world or provide an escape from it. I will have to second that motion. I think Goldfinger is the best of all Bond films. I think The Living Daylights is the closest to an Ian Fleming book, however. As for this one, well, if Casino Royale was sort of like the Batman Begins of the 007 movies, this is sort of the Born Again Bond. It's an exciting film, it's got some great fight sequences, great action set pieces, but to me, it just doesn't really feel like a real Bond movie. Uh, a rare shout out for a Timothy Dalton Bond there from a Joe. What's your favorite? Well, Bond? I think the best of the Bond films come from Sean Connery, but personally, my favorite is Goldeneye because that's the first one I saw in the theater. It was the first one for Pierce Brosnan, and that was also groundbreaking outside of just movies because that's when the first person action video game Bond franchise was launched, which I wasted many hours of my childhood playing. Uh, all right, that seems, uh, <laughs> that seems totally fair. For me, though, I'm going to go with uh, From Russia with Love. As with all Bond movies, if there's James Bond, there's a Bond girl, in this case played by Olga Kirilenko, and a villain also played by Matteo Almaric. How do they uh, compare to their uh, counterparts? Uh, Matt Singer, best Bond girl, best Bond villain? If you want to see sort of the Matthew Almerick version of the Bond villain done right. I loved Jonathan Price in Tomorrow Never Dies. He's the, the media mogul, the kind of uh, Ted Turner-ish, Rupert Murdoch-ish, but he creates the news and he's got a stealth boat, which is always useful in, uh, when you're fighting Bond. Ben? 
Uh, I, I think Olga Karolinko is kind of wasted in this film, oftentimes to sort of justify a lot of the sexist implications that go with being a Bond girl. They say, well, we'll give her some action sequences too, and here she is toting around a machine gun. And I think for me, the best Bond girl is Ava Green from Casino Royale because they establish her as her own character, her own woman. They give her things to do, but they don't force her to try and be an action hero as well. And I think that's why she's Bond's one true love. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Fomka Jansen from uh, GoldenEye, but uh, again, again, I'd watch, you know, Fomka Jansen eat oatmeal. And, uh, but I also am going to give a shout out to uh, Marianne Dabo. Again, we're going back to, uh, uh, to a Dalton movie and The Living Daylight. She's Living sort Daylight. of, she's the uh, cello playing assassin. And uh, you know what I skipped over, Joe Layden? Joe, uh, your favorite Bond girl and your favorite Bond villain. I have to second that shout out for Sweet Famke anyway. Jansen. All right. What a hottie. All right. Uh, you got a favorite Bond villain there, Joe? First uh, bad guy always scares you the most. Joseph Wiseman is Dr. No. He set the template for all other Bond villains. He did, although we never mentioned uh, Ernst Blofeld, who was played by, you know, among others, Telly Savalas and Donald Pleasance, in, in, addition to, uh, in addition to others. All right, now our final verdicts uh, on the film. Uh, Matt Singer, uh, see it, skip it, or rent it. I have to say skip it. I still like Daniel Craig a lot as James Bond, but I think this James Bond film is just not one of the better ones. Joe Layden? I would say rent it. It's a good action movie. It's sometimes a great action movie, but it just doesn't feel like a James Bond movie. All right, those are their thoughts. Uh, ben and I both say see it. I say see it with significant qualifications. Two or three great action scenes. That's why you should see it. I, yes. I do think it falls short. As do I. I was disappointed, but at the end of the day, it's James Bond, and these movies don't come along all that often, so you got to go see it. So we've got a split decision, but overall, the majority rules, and we say see Quantum of Solace. All right, thanks for joining us. As always, guys, good conversation. And as I mentioned, six classic Bond movies have all just been released on Blu-ray, so check them out, too. Coming up next from the creators of Finding Nemo and The Incredibles, Pixar's latest animated adventure comes to our DVD out now list. Race you to the top. I'll give you a head start. Your mistake. All right, looking at movies out now on DVD. George Lucas keeps the money truck rolling with Star Wars The Clone Wars. Morris Chestnut and Gabrielle Union have the it's perfect holiday. What's JFK, the ultimate collector's edition? From the grassy knoll. My DVD pick this week is arguably the funniest movie of the year so far, Tropic Thunder. Some folks thought the Ben Stiller-directed comedy was overhyped and even offensive, but I love the ensemble cast of actors making fun of ensemble cast of actors. In a daring role that only an actor of his quality could pull off, Robert Downey Jr. is simply fantastic. The Two Disc Collector's Edition comes jam-packed with all types of funny extras, including hilarious interviews with stars Stiller, Downey, and Jack Black, all in character. What the hell is this, man? Hey, ow, ow. It's just, uh, he was just 10. Yes. Yeah. How's that feel? My pick is a film I suspect does not need my endorsement, but I'm giving it anyway. Wally -E is totally original and surprisingly tender without more than a dollop of schmaltiness. If you don't know, it's the story of a distant future where pollution and overconsumption has made Earth uninhabitable. And the last creature on Earth is a lonely, trash collecting robot named Wally, -E, whose sole companionship comes from a resilient cockroach and an old VHS tape of Hello Dolly. Three, two. This is an original, inventive film, and you need to see it. Both Wally -E and Tropic Thunder will be available on Tuesday. Want to know what you can't miss this weekend? Well, stay tuned for my three to see. Closed captioning for At the Movies is sponsored by. It's joy, it's ecstasy. There's only one word for this. It's bliss. Creamy, smooth, bliss is everywhere. You just have to unwrap it. Hershey's Bliss Chocolate. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. Time now for my three to see, my picks for the three movies to check out this weekend. No, 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 no. At number three is a movie released last weekend, Role Models, directed by David Wayne. 
Paul Rudd co-writes the film and stars opposite Sean William Scott, who does his funniest and raunchiest work since American Pie. One for one. If you're in the mood for something more thought-provoking and serious, then see The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Powerful and gut-wrenchingly moving, the last 20 minutes in particular will rip at your heart. And at number one, get used to me talking about this movie throughout the award show season. It's Slumdog Millionaire. This is why we fall in love with movies, thanks to an inspiring story and some tremendous performances. Stop shaking your head, Mankiewicz. The film will leave you smiling at the screen. I absolutely loved it. I liked it too, but you go so far overboard that I gotta smile and shake my head. It's a Best Picture nomination. You heard it here first, buddy. No, it's not. Okay, recapping the movies on this week's show. We both say you should see Bolt. It opens next week. We both say see Slumdog Millionaire. We both say CJCVD, and the roundup was split on Quantum of Solace, but the consensus was see it. We liked a lot this week. Unprecedented for us to agree so much, but that's just the way the movies played Sometimes. out this week. So that's it for now. Remember, we're always online on atthemoviestv.com. And we'll leave you now with a look at movies coming up on our next show. And until then, as always, we'll be at the movies. I'll do whatever it takes to make you safe again. The hunt is his obsession. <laughs> Streusel? Streusel? If you love Streusel, you'll love our coffee cake pancakes covered with Streusel and fruit topping. IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Danke schön. Gesundheit. If you think a prune is a prune, you haven't tried Sunsweet Ones. How do you like the individual wrappers? It's not dry at all. They're delicious. <laughs> Sunsweet Ones. Bite for bite, even better than fresh fruit. The rhinovirus, a leading cause of the common cold. Why just cover up the symptoms of your cold when you can get over your cold faster with Zycam? From the creators of Finding Nemo, he may be made of metal. Wow. But Disney Pixar's Wally is all heart. <laughs> On DVD and Blu-ray, November 18th.